The Hazy Podcast is brought to you by EK the DJ and Michael Reed. Join them each season as they discuss the adventures contained in various audiobooks. This season, they'll be providing reactionary commentary on the So I Got Hazed audiobook by Michael Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be our shortest podcast in the history of the Hazy Podcast. September 28th, New Roomie. The magical day had finally come. Paul was going to be my new roommate. Paul was in, and Ethan was out. John, Paul, and I moved Ethan's stuff out in less than an hour. I wish I had their help when I was moving my stuff in. They were monsters. We arranged our beds in a bunk bed style, so the room opened up. When we got all of Paul's stuff moved in, we had to celebrate. We put wet towels at the door and a fan in the window. When John went to adjust the fan's speed, he fell into the fan and pushed the screen out onto the roof. Up until that point, we didn't know that the screen could even come out. So I already have two fucking strikes, and John Knowles (laughs) has now tripped and fallen through my window screen onto the roof of Muse. Discovering now that you have roof access. Absolutely. That also could have gone horribly wrong if there wasn't roof access out there and john plummeted to his death terrifying the pause right now is just me actually thinking about that for the first time this is when paul had the idea that we should go out onto the roof and smoke out there i didn't think it was a good idea but it would be easier to smoke weed on the roof and make for a badass story we celebrated our friendship and move-in day on the roof together. This was our new blazing spot. What was sort of interesting about smoking weed on the roof too is sometimes gusts of wind would come by and you couldn't light it. So we were lighting the bong, bubbler, joint, whatever it was that we were using, bowl, in the room, like holding our hand in the room to light it (laughs) and then bringing it back outside. Why don't you just get a torch from the tobacco store? Uh, You know what? That's a great idea. I don't think... I thought I was not ever going to use a torch when I was that age. I was like, oh, that's too much like fuel and butane just spewing all over my stuff. And now look, kids are using them for dabs all the time. Constantly. Which absolutely leads into this next story. September 29th, Tar Story. I was sitting in my room talking to friends from back home when Kurt came in without knocking and said I had to come with him. I asked why, and he just smiled at me. I figured he had some amazing weed he wanted to show me. On the way to Kirk's room, Kirk stopped by John in Evan's room, and asked John if he wanted to come. He wouldn't tell John what he wanted to show us either, and John said, Well, I'm not fucking coming then. Kirk convinced him in one silver-tongued sentence, still not mentioning what he had, and we walked down the hall. When we walked into Kirk's room, His roommate Duke was sitting in his bed, with his feet kicked up on a chair, watching TV. You know what I've always appreciated about John Knowles? He always pretends like he's not listening to what you're saying to him, but he is so socially (laughs) aware of what you're talking about that he, like, makes fun of the situation in absolutes. Where are we going? To my room? What are we doing? I can't tell you. Then I'm not fucking coming, man. <laughs> like, he already knew <laughs> where the conversation was going. <sighs> oh, he's the same to this day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he looked completely fucked up watching an old John Wayne movie on the TV. Kirk explained that he had a drug that was similar to pot, except odorless. It sounded awesome and scary all in one. It was time to experiment more, and I figured it was worth trying at least once. I asked, so it's odorless and it looks like hash? What is it, man? Kirk finally told us, this is opium, boys. Whoa. I swear, when he said this is opium, boys, the song like went through my head. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I thought to myself, I didn't realize that we were going to be smoking something as addictive as heroin. What's the high like? I asked. It's exactly like a weed high, except really mellow, Kirk replied. Is it super addictive, man? I don't want to be curled up beside a convenience store offering blowjobs for opium, I laughed. It's nothing like that, 
Just give it a try. You'll probably like it. Plus, what is it that you say about college? It's time for experimenting? Kirk replied so calmly. How could I say no? He hit me with my own words. What was I going to say? You're stuck. Yep. You're lost. The opium looked like a tiny black ball of resin. Kirk put the opium on the end of a paper clip that he had set up so that it would support itself. It was like a tiny paper clip resin stand. When they lit the opium, it stayed lit and smoking, just like a resin ball of weed would. They placed a glass cup upside down on top of the smoking opium ball. Then they put a plastic straw underneath one edge of the cup and took a hit. It was my turn next, and when I took my hit, it felt smooth, almost like I was inhaling nothing. Pot had much more of a choking feeling than opium did. When I had a few hits, I said I was going back to my room to grab something. I was so fucked up that I wandered around my dorm room for what felt like a lifetime. I couldn't even remember what I went over there to get. I went back to Kirk's room and told him I could see how people could get addicted to that shit in Vietnam. The smell didn't stick, so nobody could smell how high the soldiers were. Just like the RAs couldn't smell how high we were. College was the time for experimenting, and that day would be my only tango with opium. I spent the rest of the day relaxing. So, just disclaimer for anybody looking to experiment. Do it when you're young. Make sure you get it from a trusted, reliable source, and be safe. I can't tell you not to do illegal things. And disclaimer, this is not to encourage people to do illegal things, but, you know, it's your body and... I, I smoked opium when I was a young kid, just once, just to try it, and that's the story. Well done. That's that's your comment as well done. <laughs> What's your true <laughs> thought? Um, I want to tell you a story, but I'm not going to record it. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me edit stuff out? No, I'm not going to tell you a story right now. I'll tell you a story later. Oh, that sucks for anybody listening. Okay. <laughs> maybe in book two. Okay, maybe in book two. On to maybe the next story. Two. Here we go. September 30th. A little haze. I woke up to the sound of John knocking on my door. I didn't answer, so he popped my peephole out. It landed on the floor behind the door. John put his eyeball to the hole and saw me in my bed. This is, like, the funniest shit ever. <laughs> I just want to point out to the listeners, this is my birthday. So, he stuck a quarter into the peephole and turned it left and left and left. <laughs> Until he unscrewed it and Until it popped it into the room. And then he shoved his fat fucking finger through. What and kind it of fucking criminal is this? <laughs> <laughs> it popped the other side of the peephole into my room and it sounded like a shell from a shotgun hitting the ground. <laughs> this big brass piece hitting a tiled floor. So that's what I woke Phenomenal. up to is that and then a big eyeball to the hole being like, strikes, I can see you. <laughs> what can you do? Strikes, let's go get high, man. I just wanted to sleep, but John didn't want to go to Chippy and Eric's apartment alone. It didn't take John long to convince me to come out with him. I asked my new roommate if he wanted to come out with us, but he said he had to study. At least he wasn't lame like Ethan. John and I went to smoke with Chippy and Eric. While we were there, the guys told us that we could spot any Sig H house because there would be Chuck Taylors hanging from the telephone lines outside the house. You know this means a lot of different things in different cultures? Yeah. So, in some cultures, it means that you've lost a homie in that neighborhood? In others, it means that you've stolen the shoes from somebody. And in others, it means that a drug spot's nearby. Or gang territory markings, too. Yep. So Crips Bloods. This was an easy way to spot safe houses if we were ever in trouble. While we were there, Chippy and Eric actually hazed us. They taught us to dance to Walk Like an Egyptian. It was funny and stupid at the same time so it wasn't that bad to just do it. When John and I were done dancing and getting blitzed, we head back to the dorms. 
And that's it. So what I remember about Walk Like an Egyptian was it was an audible cue. So once we taught you the dance, it was for the rest of the semester or your pledging time, whenever it went dum 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 you were supposed to break into the dance. This is true. With Chippy and I, it was walk it was it wasn't walk like an Egyptian, it was I just died in your arms tonight by cutting crew. Oh, that's even worse. And uh, it was ding, 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 ding. And whenever, whenever the brother that put that on us uh, assigned it, it was he would do the ding, ding, ding. And uh, I don't remember. One of us played the guitar, and the other <laughs> one played something else. And oh, uh, I just died in your arms tonight. <laughs> and we something... were supposed to go until they told us to stop. There's something about cued public embarrassment that hardens you as a man, but also oh, just yeah. gives you such a strong sense of humor. I remember being in the dining hall and having to break up with a stranger. Breaking up with a stranger uh, is actually the worst because it's one of my it can favorites. Go, it can go any <laughs> which way. I got really lucky, and the girl that uh, I had to break up with like played along. See, now I think that I could do it five hundred times in a day. Like, if there was a camera crew on me, I could fake <laughs> break up with five hundred people in a day. <laughs> That's it. It's over. <laughs> this is it. I'm done. And then you I'm literally walk up you. to the next girl and be like, "Oh, and you thought we had a thing? No, I'm done with you too." And then you go to the next girl and be like, "And I guess you were wondering what's going on with you and I." Same thing as them two. Nothing. Three in a row, baby. On to the next four hundred and ninety-seven. Let's go. Give us a show, guys. That's as I'm saying. That's a clip right there. That is that is a sketch right there. I need five women. Stat. I need 500 <laughs> cc's of women. All right, so, guys. Uh, go ahead. Unless you want to tell so, your story uh, to this, everybody. No, this is uh no. I'm not gonna tell that story. Not maybe for book two. I'll tell you this story. Uh, no. Uh, what I was gonna say is like with the, with this this day this th- that was my birthday. And you were hazing us, teaching us to walk like Egyptians. Right. So I'm not sure what's, what's coming next. <laughs> not but I remember things. what came next. <laughs> not good things. Not good things. Well, everybody, thank you for our Christmas special. Unlike the South Park episode, it's not filled with cocaine. It's filled with opiates. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.